Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing all Waffi in a five-minute pool on ICC. Oh, let's play Scandinavian, why not? <laughs> hey, it's Friday when I'm recording this, and I just feel like playing a Scandi. So I've since learned that this is the Quatar flag, is that right? Yes, Quatar. Thank you guys who have pointed that out in previous videos. Okay, d3, this blocks in the light square bishop. That's kind of a passive move. I think there's several things I can do. I'm going to develop the bishop aggressively. And I'm going to stake out some more central space than I usually would by playing knight c6. And it's nice that this knight comes in behind the c-pawn as opposed to in front of it, as usually happens in this line. And now I'll play pawn e6. I could put the pawn on e5, but I think it's better on e6 because then these two pawns complement each other. They control d5 and d4 as opposed if the pawn were on e5 to just controlling d4. Okay, so this is an interesting plan by white. Attacking my bishop. I don't mind so much losing this light square bishop for white's knight. I do mind potentially having double isolated c pawns, though, if white were to play bishop take c6 check. So I'll play this just to cover that piece. So my opponent's playing pretty quick. I have to bear that in mind. Uh, bishop f4, so I could play bishop d6. Yeah, I think I like bishop d6. Let's offer a trade of the bishops. They may defend with queen d2. If bishop takes, queen takes. I like that my queen is slightly centralized. Yeah, queen d2. Probably just castle now. Yeah, let's just castle. So white takes. Now I'd like to get this knight into d4. Could I play it immediately? So knight d4, bishop takes d6, queen takes d6, bishop takes b7. Hmm. I guess I have rook b8 there, followed by rook takes b2. Yeah, this is kind of dynamic, but I think it's working out tactically. The other thing is if bishop takes b7, I take on f4, queen takes f4, rook b8. And then the bishop will move, and I'll have, I'll have knight takes c2, forking the two rooks. So I thought for a second about playing a, a preparatory move, like b6 or something, or something so the, the pawn is not in the line of fire of the bishop, but I don't think it's necessary. So we'll do it this way. I might play b6 if white plays something to guard. Yeah, like knight e2. b6 or even b5. I think b6 is reasonable enough. And if the capture occurs, do I take with the pawn or the queen? I was thinking queen at first, but now I'm kind of reconsidering. Okay, so pawn there. Let's Check. take. I think we might have some nice pressure against their pawns. They'll play rook ad1 almost certainly. I'd like to get this knight to f4 eventually. I wonder if I could play g5, knight h7, knight f8, knight g6 and get it there. If something like queen f4, I think queen e3 will be the answer. White might try for d4 right now. So I may want to take some prophylaxis against that. Actually, let's go here. And if queen e3, I'm thinking g5 to defend the queen. Yeah, so let's play it like this and encourage a queen trade. I don't think my pawn becomes too weak on this square. Unless they could play rook e5 to try to surround it, stopping pawn g5 after the capture on f4. But it's still hard to attack that pawn even. So I don't think that is going to concern us for now. Rook d2, what's the point of that move? I don't know. Let's just play rook d6. Get ready to double the rooks on the file. So this is an all-out effort to play d4. That's what it looks like. So if I double d4, I can always push c4 then. Keep the position closed. All right, so they're coming at us with b4 this time. Knight d7, looking to go to e5. If that, though, then they might sneak in d4 while our knight is blocking the two rooks from coordinating. A5 would probably be 
consistent. Let's do a5. Just try to control the b4 break. Quick play by my opponent. Okay, I'm going to see if I can sneak in this maneuver. That knight needs to be improved. I could go to d5, but they're just going to chop with their bishop. Should I ever do that? Yeah, so this is kind of expected. Keep this closed. Maybe in the future I can play b5, b4 and try to reopen the position. So let's do it this way. They could play bishop e4, stopping my knight from coming to g6. h4 maybe, trying to stop g5. Okay, let's do this. Drive off this rook. Might go to b5. E5. Mm, let's play g5. Minute 12. Got to watch that. Hmm. So bishop e4, probably 97. Somehow seems dynamically balanced. I wonder if I could ever trap this rook, though. I have some ideas about that. If I can get my knight to d6 while this pawn is protected, that rook would be trapped. Problem is how to execute that. Huh. That's a good idea. That move I didn't see. Hmm. I think I have to take it. Now they're going to play rook h5. Okay, let's come here. Try to set up a threat against the g-pawn. <laughs> Maybe rook here. Check. And then I'm thinking b5 and try to go for b4. So they take with the king instead of the rook. Interesting decision right there. Check. Let's drop this back and encourage a trade. So keep this defended. Check. They can play rook h7. I might have to agree to a repetition if they want it. Let's come behind this pawn. Down about a minute on the clock. B4 is not really a threat yet, though, is one problem I have here. Um, let's just play this. Because if B4, rook takes A5. Let's keep this closed. So if g5, I can play f5. Let's surround this pawn now. While they're a little bit stuck. Okay, let's maneuver here. Uh, bishop f5. Okay. Check. They're going to come, come Check. around and get there. Check. Hmm. They can check on b7. I have king f8 to hold the rook. Uh, let's do this. I know that blunders the B pawn, but I wasn't sure what to do. Time warning. Let's see if we can trade that. Ah, blundering my rook. Rook check here. They didn't see it. Uh, we can guard this way. Ah, mate. Check mate. Ah, I got mated. Uh, they wove a nice mating net there. I didn't see that coming. Hmm. So got outplayed by Al Wafi in that end game. Yeah, the time crept up on us, didn't it? So insidious that clock. <laughs> yeah, after Rook D8, I saw that they couldn't play D6 check because it would hang the bishop, but I didn't see that it was setting up Rook A G8. Okay, let's go and have a look. Oh, it hurts me so bad to lose in the Scandi. That's just painful. <laughs> 
White didn't choose the most inspiring setup with d3 and then Fianchetto in the bishop because they could have this setup, but with the pawn on d4. So, I mean, out of the opening, I didn't have any trouble. Problem is, I just got to play faster. Yeah, so here after knight h4, I mentioned that white might be trying to play bishop take c6, hence I played this move to just kind of guard against that possibility so I can take with a rook. Yeah, bishop d6. Bishop e7 would also be fine, but I think bishop d6 offering a trade of bishops is potentially even better. And here I dove in with knight d4. Let's start up the engine and just see what it thinks. It says take first and then play knight d4. Yeah, that might be slightly more accurate just because I'm threatening knight takes c2. I thought knight d4 would be trickier, but that may not be the case. So my opponent just took. So if bishop takes b7, I was planning rook b8. And if the bishop retreats, it has to stay guarding f3. Then I can just take here with pressure on c2. Looks excellent. So knight e2, and I played b6. Not sure I played this 100% correct right here. I feel like I should have got slightly more than I did. You can see the advantage is creeping up in black's favor. It's not incredibly high right now, but check. I'll take a quarter pawn advantage in this position. Rook f d8, all these moves look normal. So now I think the key is trying to maneuver this knight. Maybe I should just play knight d5 and agree to trade my knight for that light square bishop. Probably that's the most practical thing to do, but I thought it'd be a little bit lame, and I don't think that light square bishop is better than my knight necessarily, so yeah, the computer says just do this and be satisfied with still having a, a small pull. That's probably mostly based on the pawn structure. White's got some weak pawns around here, whereas black has a very compact and Scandinavian uh, style pawn structure. So I played queen f4 and then queen e3. This is slightly annoying because if I take, that helps to strengthen white's pawn center. And they might play pawn d4, advance in the middle. So I played g5. The engine does not approve of that decision. It says go all the way over here, queen a4. I didn't look at that move. Transferring the queen over to the queen side. Yeah, didn't cross my mind at all. Attacking this pawn, so a3. And now go about the plan of doubling up on the d-file. I guess then my queen does monitor the d4 square. So there's something to be said for that. g5, rook d2. Again, I should play knight d5. So it actually says white should take and then go g5. Okay, this was something I was a, a bit worried about because uh, if white can play g5 before I do, then I won't be able to rescue my pawn on f4. And if I play, like, knight h5 or something, I would assume bishop f3 attacking the knight is good. I'd have to play g6, and probably at their leisure they could do this and then play rook e4 and go after this pawn. Although maybe I can defend it tactically with a counterattack. But the knight on h5 uh, is not well placed, and the fact that it might have to babysit the f-pawn is a little concerning. I mean, white might go rook e4 and then take on h5. Something along those lines. So rook d2, rook d6. But everything seemed all right. Even a5. Wasn't sure about this move because it does discourage b4, but it kind of weakens b6. b6 no longer is defended by a pawn. So I'm not sure. It's, it's debatable how much I really have to worry about pawn b4. The engine says just ignore it, just play g6. And then after b4, rook c8, okay, just keep a solid structure, keep the c-pawn defended. And again, it likes black. So king f1, and here I started maneuvering the knight. Yeah, and white chose a good opportunity to strike in the center. That was one thing I was worried about. If I move this knight, it's not directed towards the middle of the board, so they might seize the chance to play d4 and start advancing there. So d4, I played c4, keeping it closed. e5 is an alternative. e5 is a move I was considering even before white played d4. So I mean, I mean, maybe even on this move, you can make an argument for e5. Wasn't sure though, I thought I might want to keep 
at least some pawns on light squares because when you put all your pawns on one color like that and your opponent has a bishop of the opposite cover, color, their bishop usually has free reign. So still, that might be better than the move I played, knight h7. c4, rook e1. Yeah, and finally take. Before I get to put my knight on g6, whereupon I might recapture with the knight, almost certainly would recapture with the knight if I could. Hmm. h4, again, maybe trying to isolate this pawn on f4, that could be good. Advantage to white. Rook e5, I played f6. G5. I mean, we've oscillated between slight advantages for either side, but nothing monumental has happened in the game so far. There's been no seismic shifts in the evaluation. Okay, here knight c8 was strong. Oh, I can go to a7. Huh. Yeah, a7 would function as a... Um, useful square to trap the rook just as well as d6 would. I don't have to get my knight to d6 to trap that rook. Oh yeah, yeah, that's clearly the best move. White can't save that piece anymore because all the squares along the fifth rank that it could go to are covered. And the vertical squares, the retreat squares along the b file are also covered. It's that simple. Hmm, knight c8. Yeah, and nowhere to escape to with the rook and knight a7 is coming. H4 is just a move too late. Yeah, White would have to do something like this and play on down an exchange. Hmm, wish I would have seen that. I played King F7. Yeah, now time became a big issue. H4 was a good move. I really struggled after this move because now White's uh, getting rid of their backward pawn, opening up the position a little bit, and freeing up this rook, which prior to that operation was looking a little poorly placed on b5 and could have been trapped, as just shown. Yeah, now I'm much, much worse. I couldn't find much to do here. I thought white might have even complicated it a little bit. Check. By and large, they kept me under pressure, but... Check. I have a feeling Check. coming up I might have been fine again. So I'm just defending against these checks and trying to prevent white's rook from coming over and attacking these pawns. So here I got behind that pawn and I could have played b4, huh? So if rook takes a5, b takes, b takes, f5, mm-hmm. Yeah, because white's king is almost mated on its current square, rook h7, but the bishop is covering that square. So f5 is a way to try to run an interference. And if g takes, I can't checkmate now because the king can go to one of these squares, but e takes f5, bishop f3. What happens if here? Oh, checkmate. this is coming. Okay. <laughs> Rook h6. Nice column checkmate. Ah, that's the clever point behind f5. Mm -hmm. So white can play bishop f3 even after a trade and check. maybe hope to check. hold. Check, check. King g8, f3. Boy, this position's precarious for white, for both sides, really. Somehow it's dead equal, but that's a lot for a blitz game. Hmm. So tactically speaking, b4 might work out because white's rook is needed along the h-file. So rook b6 I played, and then f3 just stabilizing g4 and e4. King g8, so here I could have played b4 again. I was still worried about this move, but I bet the same operation is working. f5, here it's even better, uh, because there's no bishop f3 for white. That's why. Mm hmm. Hmm. Some tactical subtleties. So king g8, d5. I played e5, trying to keep the position closed. Yeah, rook d6, trying to stop the d-pawn. I sort of felt in Zugzwang right around here because I don't want to move the rook, the deep on rolls. I tried to move my knight, but that allowed bishop f5, which I don't believe I should allow. And if I move the king, I think this rook maybe gets back here. Maybe that's not a big issue. 
But king h3 was an unpleasant move to face when my time was ticking down. So rook g5, yeah, that looks like a reasonable move. Offer a rook trade. I could have done that. So I went here, and he jumped at the chance to play bishop f5 and check. transfer that bishop to e6, but check. Check. Yeah, now my king was in danger the rest of the game. Rook b8. Check. I gave a check, and then just came back. Yeah, and here they missed, or coming up, they missed a, a win. Yeah, right here, rook a7 was winning easily Check. because if king f8, then rook h8, Check. and I'm getting mated. Check mate. So I'd have to Check. bail towards the center with my king and allow rook takes g7, and I'm down a rook and losing. So that was an easy win. This probably also wins. Yep, it does. Connecting the rooks on the back rank. Too many threats with these rooks coordinated, and black is temporarily up a pawn, but it's it's not enough. Rook a7 still remains as a threat. So I tried to do this, but yeah, even here, hardly a way out. Checkmate. I have to play the desperation move f5 to give my king the f6 square. So white even had a force checkmate before here. Okay, starting with rook h8. Mm-hmm. Rook h8 check. here, and then rook check. a6 check. And if I step either here or here, I'm running into issues on the c file. Yeah, rook c6 is made either way. Checkmate. Or here, same thing. Checkmate. And if king c7, even rook c8 is mating. Checkmate. Or d6. Checkmate. <laughs> Have you heard checkmate enough now? <laughs> Okay, so I lose this game. Checkmate. Uh, nice play by Al Wafi, especially at the end. I think they uh, made the most of their rook being on b5. That h4 move especially rescued it. Wish I would have seen knight a7. That was that was a turning point in the game. Or my my, my knight, knight never had a7. I suppose I think it was c8 that it had. Yeah, I could have played knight c8 right here and then to a7. So that was the move that I could have played. All right, at any rate, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll be back again tomorrow with another one. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.